right, so welcome to Wednesday's garden update. As you can see, there's a few things going on here in the garden. The onions, looking amazing. Last year's crop, no, two years ago crop. Last year's crop, woo, Megan, our woofer, came and did that in the, um, I can't even remember when she was here, but she did that. That's this year's crop. And this is where I've harvested Wednesday for some onions for the farmer's market. And I'm going to do it again there. And then as these uh, grow, we're going to take these tops, put them there, and I'll have two sides of the alternating bed. Working wonderful. I'm happy with that. Cucumbers, if you remember, I uh, had one little bush cucumber come up. And there's supposed to be three or four in here. I planted those other um, seeds. And you can see that we have some coming up. We have some weeds too. Um, this is grass. I'm gonna have to get those things out of there. But anyway, um, so we've got some cucumbers coming up in this. How well they'll do, I don't know. Oh my lord, okay, the tire grass. I'm struggling with the top and I might actually um, do what I've done elsewhere, which I'll tell you about here in a few minutes. The top of this thing gets so dry. Oh, looks like we have a little green maybe right there. Oh! Maybe. So, um, it gets dry. Looks like we have a roly-poly right there, too. Out you go. Um, but, I found that the lower levels, um, if you remember, I planted basil here in the uh, second row. If you're looking right there, it's like a little green. There's some little green. There's some little green. There. There. Anyway, we have little greens coming out. The rest of this has not been planted because I had started it in the barn. And, yeah. I also put tomatoes up here, which it looks like we have one little green right there. If we can get some tomatoes out of that. If not, over here on the other side of the onions, hardening off, I have some black tomatoes right here that got really leggy. And I've kind of, I think I'm going to stick those up there when they've been out here just a couple more days. I just want to give them a couple more days. Um, some of them are starting to get their fourth leaves. If you can see that right there. Um, some of them are still a little leggy, but I think, see, here's another one with four leaves. I think I'm going to put these out because they really dry out here while I'm trying to harden off. And I think that's part of my problem. These are uh, bell pepper, bullnose bell peppers, and I don't remember what these are. So, and they're not doing anything, so what the heck. All right, so with the flood, this is my... Climbing spinach um, teepee, and if you'll notice, I put some hay. We have one right here. Now remember, this these things really they went out. They had been hardened off and everything, and they had good red um, what do you call it here stems. Um, beautiful, and then oh the poor babies, it. Uh, it flooded. Okay, guys, I'm not even going to even try and sugarcoat it. See, I've got some. One over here doing really decent. So what I did was I put hay around them, kind of in a Ruth Stout method. This is, remember, I'm learning what suits me as I go. So I'll get to that here in a minute. And over there are blackberries, thornless, all the apple trees. The peach tree seems to be doing the best this year, but I have noticed little apples on the apple trees, I just hope they get a whole lot better because everybody just keeps looking at me going, you got crab apples, you got crab apples. I don't know how to tell the difference. So anyway, here's our apple trees. A neighbor going by. They think I'm crazy anyway. So, all right. So there's two plants right there that have been transplanted. They're mystery plants. I don't remember what they are. <laughs> they were kind of off by themselves. And then I have the squash the summer squash and the summer squash right here um, and then I went ahead and put out my uh, dragon's eggs and cucumbers now if you'll notice they have hay all the way up to the green leaves and this is where the experiment comes in after the flood um, I found this guy buried in hay but still hanging on and I thought okay if he hadn't been underwater but just had the hay around him to support his stem, what would have happened? So these guys, while they're planted, they really are have hardy stems. So they don't have a whole lot of green leaf going on, but their stems are hardy, and that's where I'm having issues. So, and I think, 
that is something, but we don't know. RJ and I can't remember what we planted. We thought everything washed away, and that thing popped up. Could be a weed. We don't know. So these two were out here during the flood. The other things were planted from seeds. And they survived with the hay around it. Now, the TP with the climbing spinach, I lost probably 50% of those plants. I have two squashes. Now, I realize they're different um, vegetables, okay? Some are more delicate, some are not. I get it. But the only difference was that these, when they got submerged, that hay overcame them. So when I came out here and kind of pulled the hay back, I still had green. So on that principle, um, since I am not very good at hardening off, when I brought these out, I put hay and they're started in those soil blocks. So I'm just digging a hole, dropping a soil block in, putting it level with the ground, and then I'm covering it up to the leaves with hay. Now these were taller, so they have a little bit more hay around them. And as you can see, they're kind of blowing in the wind. Um, and this is my lovely trellis. Um, it was a cattle panel that got beat all up and it's got these spiky things, so I pushed it down in the ground. But these two right here, which I believe are some kind of squash, they might be watermelon, but I don't think so. I think they're squash. Um, so they will be my experiment because I did the same thing with them, only I did it just as they were peeking out. So they have only been out like two days in the soil blocks in the barn. So I didn't do any hardening off. I just did it and went. So those up there that I've been struggling to harding, hardening off, I'm thinking I might put them, the tomatoes, up in that top thing and cover it with hay and, and go from there. Because the hay does something. I don't, I don't know if it supports it or what, but yeah. We'll see how it does. Um, also, the other thing that's going on is the mud hole. This is a low spot of the orchard or the garden. And yeah, we compost in here and I've used up all the compost because it just, it has a lot of moisture and blah, blah, blah. They say that that tree is diseased because of too much moisture. I don't know. Um, so if you watch Facebook, you know that I got five, uh, I'm sorry, seven planters yesterday and I got five horse feeders and three water troughs all for 15 bucks there's the uh, planters what it is is the bottom so these are lick tubs for goats this size right here is 125 pound size the ones that I'm using for the horse feeders are the 60 pound size they're about half the size and the ones with the water troughs are, are this size but they don't have holes in them the most common thing with these lick tubs is the bottoms bust, like get a big crack all the way across them or, or they kind of split like a piece of wood. So what I've done is I took these and yes it's an odd shape but I wanted to be able to pack them in as many as I can without cutting myself off. I want to be able to get right up to each one so I wanted a thing exposed and I didn't want it just in two lines. So anyway, now when this drains all that water is going to be sucked up into these without overwatering my plants. And this is going to be our herb garden. Um, Lee went down and he got the good soil that has been amended with fish guts and turtle guts from the pond. And we are going to, I've got to water them in and break it all up and do all that stuff. And then I'm going to put potting soil on the top. Good miracle grow potting soil to start the seeds. And these will just be here I'm going to plant them with perennials to start. So, and that'll be my herb garden. So, a lot going on. Beehive is over there. Uh, pecan trees are over there. This little tree is doing much better. Um, we had to retie it up, but we're straightening it out. And they say that it's, um, when the master gardeners came out, they said it had some kind of disease um, and not to plant any tomatoes around it, hence the garden, the containers. It has something to do with this, like, big spot right there. I don't know. They didn't know if it would ever produce fruit. Actually, they said the whole thing was going to die. Just so you know, it ain't dead. <laughs> it is doing great. Um, it is what it is. I think if you just give it time to um, recuperate, you can see something's been chewing on it a lot. Probably the goat, which we finally figured out how to get him out of here and keep him out of here. But um, Wednesday is my mowing day. 
but I mowed this last week on Monday, so I'm going to actually get out here and start mowing. And I will see you guys next week. Oh, wait, I have one more thing. I don't know if I talked to you about it or not. But the reason I thought the hay thing would work. There's the blackberries, by the way. As I trucked to the other side, I should have done it. Um, anyway, yes, here's peaches. Just get another walk up the garden. Um, this little guy right here. Okay, so I put hay around him. This lady gave me this. Um, it's a sage plant. It's a perennial. And it's an herb. And the thing is, is she pulled it out and just gave me, like, the plant with the dry root on it. And the roots weren't kept moist or anything. But I brought it home, and I stuck it in a pot with good soil. Gave it a good eat and drink for, like, three days. It perked back up. Then I jerked it out of that soil, put it in shock again, and stuck it out here um, along the fence line. And at first I thought I was going to do it in a container, and that's why I did it that way. Then I just decided it probably would do just fine in the ground coming back each year. So I put hay around it and watered it in real good. And it actually looked worse than this yesterday morning. So it is coming back, and for that I'm, I'm thinking the hay does something. I don't know what, and I know people are yelling at me saying, oh, you got to use straw. No, I don't. I'm using hay. I have hay. We have lots of hay that we put in our compost. And hay is hay. Hay, hay, hay. <laughs> so, um, it is what it is. But I am going to get out here and mow this and get it looking good. Try and harden off some of those tomatoes and put them up top with my hay remedy and see if that will help. And then we'll go from there. See y'all later. Bye.